Hey animators and everyone else, this is Sonali Singh and welcome back to yet another video. Today we are going to talk about a very essential feature of Maya called file referencing. If you don't know about it yet then let me tell you how easy and useful it is. So in this video we'll cover what is file referencing in Maya, how do you reference an asset in Maya, how is it better than importing an asset, why and when you should reference asset versus import them and different questions like that so let's jump right into the video and let's get started so let's start with the first question which is what is file referencing in Maya as explained by Jonathan Cooper in his book Game Anim a highly recommended book if you haven't heard of it yet links in the description below do check it out so as per the book referencing is essentially the ability to embed a reference to one file inside another such that an animation file only contains a link to the model and rig rather than a unique copy of them. In simpler terms, it basically creates a link between the actual source asset and your Maya file without creating copies of the source file itself. So this lets you work on temporary assets that can be updated anytime during a production pipeline in your existing file itself. File referencing is very useful when you're working in a parallel pipeline such as game dev where multiple departments like modeling, rigging, animation, all of them are working simultaneously on the same character. So usually in such a pipeline, once the character model is approved, a character rig is created using the proxy mesh with the desired proportion. Now this is not going to be the final rig. The main purpose of the rig here is to allow the animators to work on the previs or block out some animations to test the game design and mechanics. Now that we know what file referencing is in theory, let's jump into Maya and see how do you reference an asset. Well in this case, we'll use UE4 mannequin as a proxy mesh. To reference a rig into your Maya scene, you can just go to file, create reference and this will open the browse window. So I'll just locate my rig file. For the purpose of this tutorial, it is located under my YouTube asset folder, but in an actual production pipeline, this will generally be under your project specific folder on a shared network or a common storage. So once you locate the file that you want to reference, which is mannequin rig in my case, I'll just select it and click reference. So this brings in a reference to the rig that we can use to make our animation. Now, if you take a look at the outliner, you'll see a diamond icon on the object node which denotes a reference object. Other assets in the outliner that are imported or is created in the scene. For example, let me just quickly make a cube and a spear here. You'll notice that they don't have any such icon. So it makes it easy to quickly distinguish your reference assets. Now that we have the rig referenced in our scene, we can start animating. And while we are doing that, other aspects of the pipeline are moving at the same time. For example, the character artist might be working on finalizing the model, the rigger might be working on making some improvements in the existing rig or fixing some issues pointed out by the animator. <laughs> So once these changes are done or if there is any kind of update in the character rig, we can easily switch the reference of a character in just few clicks without losing our work and our sanity. So there are two useful features that we can use to switch to the latest version of the rig which is reload and replace reference. Let's take a look at an example of reload reference first. Let's say while animating, I notice that there's a really small fix that I need immediately. For example, the neck control here is really small and we are not able to select it without going to wireframe mode each time I want to rotate the neck. So I go over to the rigger and say, hey, can you scale this controller a little more? And the rigger is like, okay, makes the controller bigger and updates the source file on the network. So now to reload the reference in our scene, we can just restart a Maya file and this will load the latest reference. But why waste time in saving the file and then reopening it and breaking the overall flow? Instead, we can just reload reference by right-clicking on the character in the outliner, select reference, and then reload. So this will reload the reference to the latest rig file with a bigger neck control and a few additions like this helmet here without having to close and reopen my file. Now we know how to reload an existing reference when the source file is updated, but what if we need to switch to a new source file? In that case, we'll use replace reference. To showcase this with our current example, let's imagine that the final character is all ready and we get an updated file with the new character. 
In this case, the team decides that we still want to keep the mannequin rig file as a backup so that it can be used as a proxy for other characters later in the project. So in this scenario, the rigger goes ahead and creates a new character file called mercenary warrior instead of replacing the mannequin rig. So to replace the character rig with the updated source, you can just right click on the reference character that you want to replace in the outliner and select replace under reference. Here you can browse for the new character which is mercenary warrior in my case, select it and there you go. We now have a new character replacing the mannequin rig. Not just that, if you scrub in the timeline, you'll see that the animation we made on the mannequin rig is now transferred to the mercenary character rig with just few clicks. That's so cool, right? These aren't the only two options that you get with file referencing. You can access more options via the reference editor. If you go to file, you'll find reference editor here below the create reference option. Just click on this and it opens a small pop-up window. So if you have multiple characters in your scene, you can see all of them listed here. Now suppose I'm done blocking my scene with all these three characters and I want to start polishing one character at a time. Plus, let's assume I'm working on a very low-end PC, which is actually true to some extent. So we don't want any lagginess while polishing our animation. To avoid this, we can use a feature called load or unload reference. So what I can do is keep a reference of one rig and unload the rest of them. So if I toggle this off, I can unload my rigs. Now this doesn't delete the rig from my file, neither it affects my animation. It's all there. I just disconnected the link temporarily. If I want to load it again, I can just toggle it back on. And here they are. For the next few options, I'll go back to my previous animation file and let's open our reference editor. Under file here, we have an option called save reference edit. This will be grayed out in general because this option is related to a particular rig. So if I select my character here and go back to file menu, you'll see the option enabled. Now what does this mean? So let's assume the character that I was animating was located under the file path E YouTube assets. But later I thought of creating more segregation for a proper folder structure. So I moved the character to E YouTube assets rigs. Now when I open my animation file that I was working on previously, I'll be greeted with this pop-up window which is asking me to browse for the location where the character rig exists now. I changed the location, right? So I'll locate my character. Once I do that, I'll select my character in the reference editor and go to file, select save, reference edit. Now Maya will always remember it and you don't need to worry about browsing for the new file path every time you open the scene. Otherwise, this browse window will keep haunting you. We can also delete or remove existing references from the reference editor. To do that, you can just select the character rig that you want to remove and go to reference menu and select remove reference. Just like other options, we can do this via the outliner as well. Just select the character and right click. Under reference, select remove reference. It gives us a pop-up saying this action is undoable. Yes, we want him out of here, so just hit remove. Now you must be wondering why don't I hit that delete button? Well, if you're so eager to hit that delete button, you can try, but it only works for the imported assets and not for the reference one, which is denoted by the diamond icon. This prevents artists from accidentally deleting the reference and end up losing all of their work as this process is irreversible. As you can see, referencing makes everything so flexible and iteration friendly. Since iteration is inevitable in any production pipeline, especially in game development, where a lot of things depend on how the player is going to interact with your character, there will be times when certain props don't hold up as expected in a given scenario. So there's a chance that your character might need some tweaking or addition based on the design and iterations and this can even happen during the final stages of production that is why most of us working in the production pipeline always use references but there is more to using references versus importing them and it's not limited to just being iteration friendly this brings us to our next question which is how is it better than importing an asset referencing is one of the best features of maya and i have five points to prove this Let's start with the first one. 
File referencing makes the pipeline very efficient by allowing different aspects of the development to run parallelly without having to worry about not getting enough time to look at the final output and make changes accordingly. Hence providing a flexibility to the modelers and riggers to constantly update their output based on the feedback and design changes. So artists get more time and valuable feedback for detailing their output with a much efficient workflow. To showcase an example of an efficient workflow, let's assume that we need to animate a scene with four characters in it. Now I'll show this example in time lapse so that you don't have to wait for the actual process. So just keep an eye on the time displayed below. On the left hand side here, I have a Maya file with four reference characters. And on the right hand side here, I have the same file where I'm using the same four characters, but I've imported them. You can see for yourself that our reference file loads much faster than the imported one. Now let's make some slight changes to these files by moving these characters around a bit. And I'll hit Ctrl plus S to save it. As you can see, saving as well as loading a file takes way less time with the reference files, hence providing us a faster and a much efficient workflow. Now the next one is... The animation file just uses a reference to the rig and doesn't actually contain them. Therefore, the file size is considerably low on the shared network or the common storage as it only contains the animation keys and the attributes. To showcase this, let's take a look at the files that we recently saved. You can see that the file size of the reference scene is much smaller when compared to the imported one. Moving on, referencing also provides. Thanks to file referencing, animators get their hands on character rigs very early on in the pipeline. This gives them more time to try out multiple ideas in the initial stage and also test out different rig setups. Then there is... Referencing is not limited to rigs. You can also reference lighting setups, environments, etc. So this allows multiple animators to break down a complex scene into modular pieces and work simultaneously on a master sequence referencing a single environment. For example, one animator can work on a fight taking place on the back of a truck while the other animator can actually animate the truck following a path for a cinematic sequence. Then the last one is Reference assets can't be modified, hence preventing accidental issues. Imagine someone opens the actual rig file and ends up deleting a bone or a control without realizing or leaves a key with some values in it and ends up hitting control plus S. Then all those animators who are using this particular file will be in big trouble. This can definitely create an unnecessary bottleneck in the pipeline and that person should brace for an impact. So don't be that guy. <laughs> but like any other feature, creating reference is not perfect or the solution to all problems. It definitely has some shortcomings and that's where we use the import option. So let's see what are those and address our final question on why and when we should use reference assets versus import them. Suppose I'm working on a personal project and I've purchased this cool mercenary warrior rig just for this particular animation. Now once I'm done with my shot, I want to send this Maya file to someone for feedback so that I can improve a little. So I'll just save my file, close this and send it. Now that person who's going to spare some time to give me his valuable feedback might not have this mercenary warrior rig. So if he opens this file, it'll ask him to choose a location where the rig exists. This is because I was using a reference of the rig in my file. In this case, he'll be like, what? I don't have such a rig. So I basically sent him an empty Maya file and end up looking like a rookie making such a careless mistake. Now you must be wondering, how do I share my file with someone? Each time you want to share a file with someone, you need to import your characters and then share it. So to do that, we'll first create a copy by doing a save as. I'll name this combo a tag imported and click save. Now you can go to the outliner, select your rig under references, select import. You can do the same for all of your environment and props. Now the character as well as the spear exist inside my Maya file and I can share this with anyone. 
Well, we created a copy first because we don't want to override our reference file as there is no option to undo once you've imported your character. So while animating, always use reference. While sharing your file with someone, always save a copy and then import your asset. Now this doesn't apply to a studio environment because all of the animators working there have access to the rig. But for personal projects or courses like I Animate that I keep attending, it's a best practice to import your character and then share the file with someone for a feedback. With that, I think I've pretty much explained everything there is about file referencing. Initially, it might seem like doing a lot, but once you start using it, you'll love it. And that's it for this video. Please give this video a big thumbs up. <laughs> My light went out. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I know you haven't. Please subscribe. And until the next time, see ya.